Thank you very much for seeing right here with us. And Isaac, Isaac joins uh, the conversation now. Isaac, it's a fine morning. Yeah, thank you very um, much you for having me. Yeah, it's Debbie here. Yeah, so it looks crazy. It feels actually nice. You look okay, by the way, bright. No, you don't have to do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you join us thank now. Thank you very um, much. Let's get talking. And um, we'll be with the Italian City and, of course, the race for Champions League football is really heating up. Mm. Atalanta have had quite the struggle this season. You look at, you know, their last five games, winning just um, once before last night. But they got the job done against Sampdoria. Four goals, nothing. Moving three points behind fourth place Juventus. You know, that has got to be pressure on Juventus. Absolutely. And um, I, I think it's not just Juventus. We're talking about um, teams like mm. Napoli, Inter Milan, AC Milan, all fighting for the title. I think this title this thing is more like um, a three-horse race because two weeks ago, we were talking about Inter Milan yeah. being the title, um, table toppers rather. And then a, a week ago, it was AC Milan. And then yesterday, we are talking about Napoli being the title winners and all of that. So I think it's crazy. And it's, we've not seen such a crazy title race for a very long time, which is beautiful for me because a lot of times they've been, it's been more like a one-horse race. Juventus held it for over seven years. And um, I think there's a change of guard and it's beautiful because it makes it very competitive and it makes it not monotonous as it should be. So I think for Atalanta, there's been one of the highest goal scorers so far in this, this particular season. Four or five seasons ago, there were also highest goal scorers. And then Gasperin has done a fantastic job with the team, you know, governizing them, signing players who replace Exeter players as well. So it's beautiful. And I think it's an interesting one. Let's see how it goes. All right. Now let's leave um, the city, but still stay in Italy and talk about the Coppa Italia. It's a story of two rivals beyond the city are taking that rivalry to the Coppa Italia uh, this particular night. We're talking AC Milan and Inter Milan clashing in the semi finals of the Coppa Italia this season. Well, both sides have basically played in, in the city, and you know, um, AC you know, have been the better side, undoubtedly. Inter Obviously. have endured some struggle ever since the loss against Liverpool. Yeah. Um, they failed to pick up maximum points, dropping. Massive four points in the Italian Serie A over the course of the last two games. Now let's look at Inter and the recent struggles. Mm -hmm. A momentary blip for you or is it a cause for concern for the Nanazuri fans? I think um, poor form is always a thing in football because um, no matter how good you are, you, also, you always suffer poor form. So I think it's just you know, the time for Inter Milan to suffer that poor form. And I think they have the quality you know, to get back themselves up. Inzaghi has done a fantastic job with the team for the last few seasons, you know, last few weeks rather organizing them to win upon wins and I think it's just a momentary blip and there shouldn't be any reason to push the panic button yet because in this Inter Milan team to me are the favorites to win the title of course because uh, they've done so much in trying to get you know um, all of you know the, the good players into the team Kano Glue we're talking a couple of interesting players Alex Sanchez is in the team they got Jerko from Inter from AC Ayers from as well so it's more like a momentary blip and it's something that they would have to make do with the next coming days but the title race for me still Thrown open, AC Milan have a chance. Napoli has got an interesting chance as well. So to me, it's an open, it's an open race. Right. And now that uh, you talk about the you know Coppa Italia later tonight, um, AC and Inter Milan, you know, recent struggles as well. You look at AC, you know, failed to win a single game in the Serie A over the last uh, you know two weeks now, over a fortnight. Back to back draws for them. Well, you could say it's a tale of two struggling teams, but who would be better to grab at least the advantage in tonight's Coppa Italia? AC Milan versus Inter Milan. I think it's more like a dress race of for what's going to happen in the title race because, mm. I mean, it's, it's a tale of, you know, two teams who are chasing the title. I mean, they've been uh, given a chance by Juventus to go all out and chase the title. So I think it's interesting. But I think uh, today's game clearly would... Um, you know, will affect the, the technique, will affect the complexion of the title race because Inter Milan are chasing the title for the first time in a very long time. Same thing, uh, Inter Milan rather, Inter Milan won the title last season with Antonio Conte and all of that. So I think this particular game, you know, has an effect on how the title race will be, but it's go down to who wants it more and who has more quality. Right, now, um, let's leave um, there for a bit and return back home, talk about the NPFL and look at the title race from here as well. It's um, very early on after match week 15. Now, let's quickly have the result of match week 15 so we can uh, know where we need to navigate the conversation from here uh, going forward. Match the 15 results, Revis Snited uh, started up with um, a 2 1 win against uh, Nasarawa uh, United. Uh, we understand, and Rangers uh, held by Canopilis to a new new draw. Abia Warra saw shooting stars by two goals one. Remo Stars. After three consecutive defeats, put that behind them, winning two goals, nothing against Katina United. Hatland won new win is over Iimba. Dakada, well, had to win, and win they did at the Nest of Champions against Lobby Stars, two goals, one. 
Aquinae to handed the heaviest defeat of March the 15. Three goals nothing at the New York Stadium uh, by Platt United. Quarry United won the winners over Night Senators, MFM, South Sunshine Stars by the same scoreline, while Wiki Torres Edge could be United by a goal to nothing. Now, a quick look at the table and um, what it looks like. The standings after March week 15, Rivers United undoubtedly top of that particular table with 32 massive points right there after 15 matches played. And of course, we've got to Platt United in second spot with um, 31 points and uh, Remo Stars are third in the NPFL standings and um, we understand a quite United are somewhere in fifth as well and uh, let's quickly talk about the story from here and you know Isaac Isaac I'm getting used to that <laughs> almost said blinding for a moment well, it should take some time <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so um, let's talk about the the race in in, in, in the NPFL now Two horse race you'd say very early on after match with 15? Well, I think it goes beyond just two horse race. I mean, Plateau United, Rivers United have been the best teams in the last two weeks. And then um, last week it was Plateau United being the top, the table toppers. And then after the blip, you know, Rivers United have, have leapfrogged and all of that. But I think it goes beyond just Plateau and, um, of course, Rivers United. I think Remo Stars have got a chance. You know, they started Remo the season have, yeah, right? on a fantastic note. They started the yeah, season sorry, on a fantastic well, note. You know, the, the last three games. Yeah, they've um, dropped points. Last th three defeats in the last four, you know. Um, Respective what happened over the weekend has changed the dynamics. So, I, I think I think it's just like I said, a momentary blip. And um, one thing has um, militated against your win has been um, lack of experience in the NPFL. They've lost mm -hmm. experience and all of that. But I think they have quality in that team. And all they need is just a good coach in the coach that they have currently, Gumbote, to try to governize them and try to motivate them to go all out and win. I think it goes beyond the two us race. I think um, Platinum United and Rivers have been good, but I think two, two, three teams would also be chasing because the, the gap between now, the second and the third. No, let's put it in very fine detail. When you mm. say two, two, three teams, let's, let's I'm, have I'm, names. I'm, I'm looking at Eno Grangers. I'm looking at um, Ayimba, who are also <laughs> okay. chasing the top now, three, top four. <laughs> that's where the conversation was heading next. Ayimba. Yeah. Um, I've picked up just two wins in the last six games. Yeah, poor. Um, lost. Over the weekend against Hatland FC, who picked themselves up, you know, picked up five, now seven points in their last um, four games in NPFL. Yeah, of it course. really gives credence to the relegation fight. I remember, you know, a couple of weeks ago, they were in Uyo, mm. played at a new new draw against Hawaii United, and, you know, I, I talked with coach Erasmus Onu, and he said, this is just the beginning. We're moving out of this particular relegation zone, and that's exactly what they're doing. But now let's talk about the Yimba and coach Finity George. Started the season very brightly at the continent. And of course, in the NPFL, but things have uh, since turned from bad to worse for them since. A poor form, I would say, because uh, of course uh, they have quality in that squad, and the same set of players that uh, help them you know, reach the stage of this competition is are the same players there. So I think it's just a little bit of injury issues that they've had, and then poor form as well. But I think Finidi George has brought in something different to the NPFL. I think it just takes some time for all of that, you know, to get to working. I believe in Basis and a chance. We have, we are just 15 matches into the season. We have over 18 more matches to go so there's so much to play there's so much to talk about and then at the end of the day at the death of the time it's quality that would count now, uh, quality well we're hoping to see more quality Aquai United are defending champions but uh, I can't quite see whether or not they've played like champions this uh, there's no season. chance there's no chance there's no chance at all <laughs> all right now let's um, leave Nigeria but of course let's stay within the shores of Africa and talk about the big story coming from Cameroon where we hear Cameroon legend Rigobert Song has been named as the National team coach replacing Atoli uh, Konsesau, <laughs> mm. following the third place finish at Afkin, now completed. Uh, it's a wave across the continent. We're talking yeah. ex internationals coming in to do their bit in Nigeria. We're having a fair show with Austin Ravon, um, joined by Emmanuel Aminike, another ex international. Joseph Yobo as well in the mix. Well, I'd rather not talk about Joseph Yobo. But he's part now, of the technical crew. No, yeah, he's part of the technical crew, yeah. no doubt. I've got my reservations there. I understand. Now, let's talk about Rigobert Song with Cameroon, with what they did at the last Nations Cup and with what they're, they're looking forward to. We're talking World Cup qualification, the players just around the corner and the roadmap going forward. What do you say? Rigobert Song is the man to need them or lead them rather to the football Eldorado, which the Cameroonians envisage. 
Well, first of all, it's a gamble, right? Because if you look at it, it's a recent trend in so many African countries where they're turning towards ex-internationals to help them, you know, reach the heights. We're talking Algeria with Jamal Belmadi, Senegal with Alusiza and the rest of them. So it's a thing. And um, it reminds me of um, two seasons ago where most European clubs were turning towards their ex-players to help them. It um, so went Ole well. Ole was so, one of them. Well, Ole, Frank yeah. Lampard as well, you know? I would rather stick with Ole. <laughs> Well, and all of that, so I think it's a gamble, mm -hmm. and um, it's a gamble that might go either way. It might be good, it might turn out good, it might turn out yeah. bad, depending on what happens. But I think for Rigobert Song, he's been in and around the Cameroonian scene mm -hmm. for a while. He was he currently, before his appointment as a new coach, he was a coach of the under-23 team. So that shows that he's got a little experience in coaching. Now, when you talk about under-23, it reminds me very quickly of the story of Andre Pello. Was yeah. appointed, you know, under-23 coach at Juventus, and you know, a couple of days later, we had the sack of Monitor Sari, mm -hmm. and then. He was brought back into that team, drafted in as a coach, and we know how the story works. Yeah, absolutely. I think, first of all, um, the Pelo story is a little unique because Pelo didn't spend time with the 23 team for up to a year, mm -hmm. you know, before he was appointed as Juventus coach. But, uh, but Song has been around for, I think, two years or so. And I think um, he's, get, he's gotten experience on how to coach it's, these big players and all of that. You know, coaching the only 23 side and being a legend, is that enough? Is that, is that a ticket to get a national team job? We're talking about the lines of Cameroon and yeah. you know, so much quality biggest, inside one of the course. biggest teams on the continent yeah, so much and, quality inside and the pressure qualifying for the World Cup has he got the quality to lead them there well time will tell right at the end of the day because we just kind of sit here and decide on who will lead his team to the, to the, to the World Cup and all of that but I think he's got you know the backing of, of, of the board and I think all of this has Samuel Leto written all of it because mm. from the reports that we got you know uh, there was a disagreement between Samuel Leto and mm. Fakir Fakir and, and, and Contessa and all of that mm. and then the Ministry of Sports in Cameroon um, went opted for Contessa to continue but Samuel said no it had to be another person. Now so, we hear you know according to reports um, you know we're quoting uh, the BBC now mm. saying this is a pronouncement that came from the president. Yeah, the ministry actually. Yeah. Through the president, the mm. directive of the president, mm. you know, called for Rigobert Song to be appointed. Oh, that sounds like, you know, sounds like interference in football. Well, it's a thing with African football. And we've seen it over and over again. Very I mean, recently, you know, no internal court issue yeah. where the Zimbabwean FA, you know, um, banned. Yeah, because of God, the FIFA hammer. Yeah, interference like this. Absolutely. And even Nigeria, you know, basketball in Nigeria is currently a mess yeah. due to all of these interferences and all of that. But I think it's a thing with African football. As long as the governments are funding football in Africa, it will always have, you know, a thing to do with government officials and all of that. But I think it goes beyond all of that. For Cameroon, I wish them the very best. But for Song, it's a thing of, um, you know, trying to prove your doubt was wrong because there was so much bad energy surrounding Rigobert Song's, um, you know, appointment and all of that. But he has to prove... Mm -hmm. He proved the trust of Samuel Leto and proved the doubt was wrong. But I wish him the very best. They take on Algeria in the World Cup qualifiers, and that has a lot to do you know, with uh, his time with the Cameroon national team. And I wish him the very best. They've got, they've got so much quality in the team, so they have a lot to do. It's interesting. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Isaac. Isaac, join Thank you very much. Uh, short, and we're hoping uh, to see you return here soon. Right. Now, um, the conversation beyond the screen continues on the social media handles. You can catch us on Facebook and on Instagram, and of course, um, also on Twitter, Spectrum TV NG. And of course, you can also catch us on the website, www.spectrumtv.ng. Uh, we're also on YouTube, search for Spectrum TV, so you get to enjoy a lot more exciting content. Now, um, that's the much time allows us to go here on Sports Central this morning. We'll return later tomorrow uh, with more exciting stories for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of everyone that made this one a huge success, I'm urging you to stay right here with us so we can continue to enjoy the magic together here on Spectrum Television. Enjoy the rest of the day and happy new month once again.